Good morning, everyone. Uh, hopefully it's Monday morning when you're watching this. Um, here is your fourth, fifth ELA enrichment assignments for week four. Now, if you're being asked to do these assignments, it's because you're re reading well beyond the fifth grade level, and we need to give you a ch challenge. I know that the activities you'll be doing um, for Ms. Folk are going to help you solidify some of those fourth and fifth skills, but these are really going to extend into sixth grade skills, and the reading levels for our passages are going to be fifth through seventh grade reading level. And we're going to do, um, if you can turn, my phone number's here, so if you need me at any time, you can call or text me. You can also dojo me. And then um, here is your checklist. So if you've already watched your science, or of course if you've had me for math or algebra, you know that I've given you a checklist, and I really use this each and every day and mark things off. Because one day you might decide to do a bunch of ELA, and then the next day do a bunch of math, however you want to do it, or you can just go day by day. And I did also give you some due dates. The due dates are in bolded, where you can see them, and I gave you some options. So for those of you who like to use technology, you're going to be able to use some technology too. So this is going to be your introduction. Um, our videos are going to be 15 minutes long, so if we need to go longer than 15 minutes, there'll be a part A and a part B for your videos. Okay, so this whole lesson this week is going to really connect to what's going on with your life currently with the COVID-19. It's also going to connect, you guys really love learning about slavery. This is going to be a little different. It's going to talk a little bit about um, what was indentured servitude, which is a form of slavery that happened during the American Revolution and during the early colonial period. So back in the time, from the time of the colonies in the 1400s all the way up until the 1700s. And um, people would move to the Americas from Europe and um, maybe they couldn't afford their boat ride to get here. And so they would promise someone, if you pay for me to come on a boat, then I'm going to work for you and be an indentured servant, which is just like a slave. But they were treated a little bit better than slaves, and they would work for many, many, many years, and then finally they would get their freedom. So it was similar to slavery and that they really didn't have any rights. They couldn't own property. Um, they pretty much had to do what their owners told them to do. But it was a little different because they were treated a little bit better. They were usually people from Europe, so their skin color was usually white. And then at the end, they would get their freedom. So similar to, yet different from slavery. And all both of these stories are going to focus about our essential question, how do ordinary people play a part in history? And at the end, I'm going to ask you guys to tell me how you um, are able to be an ordinary hero um, during this time that we're all dealing with, because it's a pretty scary time, it's a pretty stressful time, but we can all be heroes. And so our skills that we're going to work on, these are going to be the same skills all week. You're going to be using tons of different skills, but these are the ones that I'm focusing on, and these are sixth grade level skills. I can read and comprehend and connect to text that is complex, and the text we're using is at a fifth, sixth grade level. And then I can cite and explain text evidence and analyze it. And again, that's our fifth, sixth grade standard. And then I can draw text evidence from my text to support my writing. And, and then if you choose, you can use technology to, to publish your writing as well. So we're going to read three different stories. And we're going to kind of read the stories together and do some guided reading and some vocabulary work. And then we're going to be citing our text evidence, working with our vocabulary. And then you're going to be asked to do a graphic organizer and then to publish it. You can either publish it on Google Docs or you can make a Google slide. Or if you'd rather just write it on line paper, that'd be fine too. So we're going to start right here with our reading on page 76 and 77. And I know the first time we read, it may seem a little weird because we're doing it all together on a video, not in person. But it's the same thing we used to always do. And you don't have to have a highlighter, but if you have one, that works out well too. So here we go. We're going to start. The first thing is we're going to do a little bit of reading because we know that good readers think about their reading before they read. So I'm going to look. Her name is Deborah Sampson. So always look at our text features. And this, of course, is what text feature? title and she is a soldier 
of the revolution. And the revolution that they're talking about is the American Revolution. When we got our independence from England or Britain, and this would have taken place in the 1700s. So I'm thinking about all the things I know about George Washington and, um, you know, uh, uh, songs I might have learned, like Yankee Doodle Dandy. We're thinking about all those things. We're thinking about the Constitution and the Bill of Rights and the Declaration of Independence. And then I'm going to look at our picture. We know it's back in the 1700s, so they would have had to have spun cotton and thread using a, um, a spinning wheel. I'm thinking how I know they dressed differently and the men had long hair with wigs and they wore stockings. So I'm thinking about all these things. And we looked at our text feature here, which is what text feature? An illustration. And I'm going to pause and think, what genre is this that I'm reading? So this is about a real person who lived during a time of the American Revolution. It's going to talk about her life, so we know it is what if it's real. Nonfiction. And remember, if I'm writing notes or I'm asking questions, the expectation is that you're answering these questions out loud to yourself and that if I'm taking notes, you're writing the same thing too non-fiction or real, and it's going to be telling the story of her life, which means it's what? And if you said biography, you're right. So it's a biography, and it's only two pages. Now I'm going to stop because I see one more text feature that's important here. Musket ball. What do we call this at the end? glossary and a musket ball is a small metal ball similar to a bullet used in an old gun or a musket so it is a type of um, bullet and then here this is really hard to see but it looks like a person is laying down maybe, maybe they've been injured all right so we're going to read and we're going to read how we normally do where I read, and whenever I pause, the expectation is that you are going to read the next word. And I know you could just sit here and listen to me read, but um, if you're reading it and saying the word, that is going to help you learn. Okay, so I really need you to be reading with me. So we're going to test it out. I know we'll have to see. You'll have to give me some feedback and see how this works. Because I know we do this a lot in class. As a young... Deborah Sampson never could have imagined that she would be in 250 years after her living in Plimpton, Massachusetts in the 1760s. She was so that she could think only about the daily to stay after Deborah's abandoned his and seven her mother had no way to support her large the older children were sent to and in the of Deborah spent 10 years as a servant to the Thomases a kind farm she worked hard on the farm and spent her free time learning to read and... Okay, now I'm going to pause here. And we practiced this a little bit before you left, but we're going to practice it again. Remember when we're reading nonfiction, we're going to focus on the key things that are answers to who, what, when, where, why, and how. These are the main things that we want to focus on. So I'm going to go through and get my, my trusty little highlighter out. We have Deborah Sampson, a who. She lived in Plimpton, Massachusetts, a where. In the 1760s, a when. 
and there's lots of other things we could write. His father abandoned his wife. What happened? What did they have to do? They went to live and work in the homes of strangers. And she was a servant. How did she get by? And she worked for the Thomases, a who. What else did she do? She practiced reading and writing. All right, we're going to keep going. At the age of 18, Deborah became a... She also made extra money spinning and... She often worked in a back room at Sprout's Tavern, where men gathered to talk about the news of the... In 1770s Massachusetts, the news was mostly about the... Ooh, big word. Revolutionary War. The old men talked about while the young men swapped stories of their feats in General Washington's. Deborah listened with fascination as she sat at the spinning. She wanted to such to. She was envious of the young men's freedom and resented the limits placed upon young of her. She wanted to take part in the important events who were swirling around. Good, and we're gonna pause and see if there's anything we wanna circle. What did she become, a school teacher? Where did she work? The tavern. What was going on, the Revolutionary War? Who was an important general? George Washington. What was she feeling? She was envious of their freedom. All right, now there's other things we could highlight. The key is not to highlight more than a couple of things in a paragraph. Okay, I'm gonna ask you to pause here, pause your videotape here, or I'm gonna pause it here, and I'd like you to stop and read the next five paragraphs and when you're done reading, I'd like you to go and highlight, and you can highlight as you go, or you can stop every paragraph just like I have. I want you to highlight key things that you think were most important. And when we come back to talk in just a minute, it's on your video number two, I'm going to see if you highlighted some of the same things that I highlighted. So who, what, when, where, why, and how. All right, finish reading and highlight your important parts.